Hello, everyone, and welcome to the chapter on continuous functions. So most functions that we're going to study this semester are going to be differentiable in the sense that they're going to be such that um, they will have derivatives. And derivatives are, you know, something that are coming up um, next chapter. But all these functions that are differentiable are start with continuous functions. And we already talked about continuous function, and we already mentioned the intuitive idea that a function is continuous at a point if you can draw that function without lifting your pen. So basically, the goal of this chapter is to make this definition formal. And of course, when I say formal, I mean a computation. Okay, so... Um, We'll have a bunch, we'll have a bunch of functions defined algebraically and we will compute where a function is continuous. So we're going to look at two different definitions. One will be uh, like the general one uh, that is not always working, sadly, but we will fix that continuous definition in a moment. So initially, uh, we say that a function f of x is continuous at a point a if the two-side limit around that point is equal to the output of the function. So this definition, even if it's short, really implies three specific things. First, the function needs to be defined. If it's not defined, it's, it cannot be continuous at that point. Okay, so that's pretty clear. Also, the two-side limit exists. Of course, the two-side limit, the two-side limit exists means that the left and the right limit exist and they're both equal. And then the value of this two-side limit needs to coincide with the output of the function. And of course, visually here, I have a nice example. We have a graph, we have a point. And of course, visually, we know how to label if a function is continuous or not. Of course, I can draw around A here, my function without lifting my pen. But if I want to specify this using uh, a limit computation, I would say, well, if I compute the left limit around, around A, and the right limit around A, they coincide, and they're both equal to the output. So the function is not jumping. We don't have a, a white dot where a black dot pops out or, or under. So here, all three quantities, left limit, right limit, and output of the function are equal. And when these three things coincide, it means visually you can, you can uh, draw the graph without lifting your pen. Uh, so this is our first attempt, like, okay, all three things must coincide. This is almost what we want, uh, and this is what we're going to use almost everywhere, but sometimes this definition will fail, and we'll have to fix it, okay? And the next example will illustrate why this, very nice, it's very nice, it's very nice, but why it fails uh, in general, to really capture the intuition, okay, beyond uh, continuity. But still, this is a very good first step. All right, let's go through an example, a very simple example, a visual example, where we're going to compute where the function is continuous using the previous definition. So find where the famous square root of x function is continuous, but using the previous definition. So first, uh, we know the domain of this function is from 0, including 0, to uh, infinity. So let's deal with... Uh, the case where there's a two-side limit for that function. So if we pick any a strictly bigger than than um, than zero. So for example, here I'll just pick a point a, and I'm going to evaluate. Okay, I'm going to evaluate this function at at a. So I'm picking any strictly positive number. So poof. So here's an example. I have my number a, and I, I'm on my square root, and then of course at a. I get the square root of a, um, the output. So, of course, on this function, at this point, sorry, for this function, if I approach the function from the left side or if I approach the function from the right side, I'm going to get towards the output of the function, which is root of a. So here, for any value strictly bigger than zero, okay, my limit as x approaches a of the square root of x is equal to a. Okay, so boom. Okay, I have my, I have my my two side limit equal to my output. So this means automatically that the function f of x, the square root of x, uh, which is the square root function, is continuous for any point that is strictly bigger than a. So poof, it is continuous for that point. So when a is strictly bigger than zero, there is no problem. But remember. 
if you are at zero. So for any number strictly bigger than zero, left, right, output, same thing, no problem, continuous there. But if I use that definition now around zero, I know that the output is zero, I know that the right limit is zero, but on the left side, things are undefined, so the left limit is undefined, so of course, this is like the basic square root of zero problem. So with the graph, we know that at A equals zero, so at zero, the limit of our function poof does not exist at zero. So because it does not exist at zero, then we cannot say that the function is continuous at zero because there is an output at zero, but and it's zero, but the two side limit here does not exist. So the function is not continuous at x. Uh, yeah, sorry, I have a hard time with my so the function is not continuous. So sadly, the function is not continuous at zero, which is very sucky. Why is it very sucky? Well, it's sucky because we know that we can draw this graph without lifting our pen at zero, from zero to infinity. Intuitively here, when we draw this graph, we put down our pen at zero and we go all the way up to infinity without a problem. But how can we make this happen? Like, what should we do at the beginning? So here's a nice little remark here. So if we look at the right side limit only, the problem here is that the right, the, the left limit does not exist because the function is not even defined. So if you have a function where the domain starts somewhere, like in this case at zero, you want to say that it's continuous if the right limit is equal to the output. You don't care about the left limit if you have a starting point. And of course, it will be the same for an endpoint. If a function stops at some point, if the domain is like all the way up to, say, 5, then the only way you can get to 5 is from the left side. So we need to adjust that two-sided limit definition with a right limit if you start at a beginning and a left limit if you end somewhere. So... The next, the next definition will really completely capture uh, what we're trying to do here, which is getting the intuitive definition going. We want to say the squared function is continuous from zero to infinity, including zero. So the next definition will fix that problem. All right, so here is the definition of continuity for a function. So first, suppose f of x has a starting point, let's say c, in its domain. So uh, we mean by this that the, 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 the minimum value of the domain is c. Then we're going to say that f is continuous at the beginning point here if the right limit coincides with uh, the output of the function. If our domain has an endpoint, so let's say d, so d is the maximum value of the domain, then we're going to say that it's continuous there if you're using the left limit. So if the left limit of the function as x approaches d is equal to the output of the function at d. And then for any point, for any other point within the domain, we're going to use the two-sided limit, okay, to check if a function is continuous. So that's the definition. So at the beginning, you only use the right limit. At the end, you only use the left limit. Anywhere in between, you use a two-sided limit. So first, a remark, so with that definition, 3.1.5, careful, there's a typo in your notes, uh, it's 3.1.5, not 0.5.1. Uh, Kant of root of x is from 0 to infinity because the right limit of the square root function at 0 is equal to 0, which is the output. Okay, so here, with that definition, we get it. We have finally our, our, our intuitive definition as a computation now, that's the the cool thing now, it's a computation. Anyways, so let's do another example. Let's say for the function square root of 100 minus x squared, let's find where the function is uh, continuous. So uh, by the way, 100 minus x squared, that's the equation of a semicircle of radius 10. So I already drew the semicircle of radius 10 for you guys, okay? And we're going to first, so here, what is the domain of that function? So the first thing I'm going to write down is the domain here. So of course, if you see it, the domain of that function is, if you have the graph, the domain is just something that you look at. So it's from minus 10 to 10. So I want an example here where there is a beginning, minus 10, and there's a end, which is 10. So let's first do the in-between. I already draw here, drew a point here. 
a between minus 10 and 10. And of course here, if you compute the left limit, of course, we're just going to do this visually. I just want to see this as a uh, very intuitive definition. So if you approach a from the left, so you can do this on the graph, you can approach a from the left, you can also approach a from the right, and you're going to get the output of that function. So here, since everything coincides, and of course you can see here that you can draw things without lifting your pen. Uh, so from the graph, okay, we can see that if you pick any value between, strictly between minus 10 and 10, you're going to get that the limit of 100 minus x squared in the square root is going to be the output. So boom here. So within the domain, there's no problem. The two side limit is the output of the function. Now, what about the starting point? So the starting point here, I can see it. Okay, so if you are approaching minus 10 from the right, you're going to get to zero. You're going to get to, um, you're going to get to the output of that function at minus 10. So here, so using the right limit only. So you can see from the graph that if you compute the right limit, so here we go, boom. Okay, so if you compute the right limit as x approaches minus 10 plus of the square root, of course you can do it algebraically too. If you replace x by minus 10 plus, a number slightly bigger than minus 10, like for example, minus 9.9. .9. If you square it, you're going to get a number that is slightly less than 100. So you're going to get 100 minus 100 minus 100 minus is zero plus, the square root of zero plus is zero, so it works. Okay, so you get zero, which is the same thing as computing the output of that function. And then what about the right side? So if you look at the graph here, okay, so if you look at the graph, uh, of course, if you compute the, the, the limit coming from the left of 10, you're going to get to zero. So here with the graph, but of course this can be done also algebraically. So here we go, so boom. Okay, so with the graph, I can see, okay, that the limit as X approaches 10 minus, so from the left of the square root of 100 minus X squared, uh, you're going to get zero. Again, you could do this algebraically. Okay, so this means that with that definition, okay, we just verify that poof, the function is continuous, okay, on the interval minus 10 to 10. And here, what a coincidence. It's continuous over what? It's continuous over its interval. And this is going to lead us to a very, very important theorem something that is very crucial for us, something that you're going to summon every time you need it. Like if you have one function given by one equation built from terms that you're familiar with, if you have to compute where the function is continuous, this computation is reduced to computing its domain. It's so beautiful. Anyways, we'll talk about this in the, in the next section. And as for that video, it's already 13 minutes, so, um, Make sure you learn the actual limit definition of continuity. So in a nutshell, if you have a beginning, if you have a starting point, you have to check if the output is equal to the right limit. If you have an end point, you have to check if the output is equal to the left limit. And for any other point in between, you have to check if the two side limit is equal to the output for continuity. And this will correspond to the intuitive definition that you can sketch the graph of that function without lifting your pen. It's so beautiful. So now we have a limit definition of continuity that captures um, the intuitive definition. Anyways, for that video, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye.